Welcome back to Photoshop. So today is going to be a fun tutorial on something that I don't usually do. So recently, as you can see, I went up and photographed the Milky Way at Cherry Springs State Park. So there are a lot of tutorials out there in how to tone in Photoshop. Unfortunately, most of the astrophotographers do not do it in the correct manner. What I'm going to be showing you is professional techniques of how to tone as a photographer to get more out of your image and hold those adjustments back from the areas that you don't want. Now, I am not a professional astrophotographer. However, I am a photographer and I've been using Photoshop for over 25 years. So what I'm going to show you are some really cool techniques to make adjustments using luminosity mask in the if then blender to hold back that from the areas where you don't want those adjustments to happen. I'm also going to go over a basic stacking technique inside of Photoshop. Now this stacking technique works good for those who don't have stacking programs. However, if you do have a stacking program, those do work really well. In this case, I'm going to show you how a basic photographer could go out, photograph the Milky Way with nothing more than a camera, a lens and a tripod, go into an Adobe product and get an amazing photo out of it. Now, just a little bit of basic information. This is Cherry Springs State Park in Pennsylvania. And if you've never heard of it, it's a great place to go to. This is the day after a new moon. It was perfectly clear. It was actually a perfect night for astrophotography. I'm going to explain to you what I did here. This is a series of photos and they were taken at eight seconds. This is a series of photos and my shutter speed was eight seconds. I was using a 35 millimeter F 1.4 lens at 1.4 and my ISO was either 1600 or 2000, I can't remember. And I was shooting on a Canon 5D Mark III. Now obviously having a very fast lens like that is gonna make a difference. However, if you do have a wider angle lens, it is going to allow you to take a little bit longer of an exposure. The most difficult thing actually with astrophotography is actually getting the image in focus by just looking at your viewfinder. It helps to use the magnification on the preview or in live view or a computer or an external monitor to allow you to view the shots to make sure that you are in critical focus. So what we're gonna do here is I have this series of photos and they haven't been edited yet. I've just starred them just so that they, just so that I know which ones I wanted to use here. I actually don't use bridge. But I put them in bridge because I think this is more likely an application that most people are going to be using. I'm going to do a shift click technique. So I've selected the first image and I'm going to click on the last one and that's going to select everything in between. Now, this is kind of a weird program. You can't actually double click up here or hit command E like you can in some programs to launch them into Photoshop. You just need to double click down here and this will launch these images into Adobe Camera Raw first. Now, shooting in Raw is, is really key here. Anytime that you can shoot raw in photography, it's going to make a huge difference in the final output of your images. Now, once again, just like before, I'm going to hit Command A this time, and it's going to select all these images. What I want to do is I want to make the adjustments exactly the same on every single image. And inside of raw, if I select them all, as I make an adjustment over here, it's going to apply it to every single image. Now, if your RAW doesn't look like this, you might have the older version. This is the brand new version of RAW. However, it's not gonna make a difference. It basically works exactly the same. The process is exactly the same. Now, a key setup idea, right down here, you have some information. I'm gonna click on this little line. Now, I've got my little circle out. I forgot about that guy. Right down here, you see you got Adobe RGB. 1998 16-bit. I want to go ahead and click on this line and it's going to bring up this dialog box. I want to make sure that I have a color space selected that I'm using on my computer. So as I edit in Photoshop, I use the color profile of Adobe RGB. Why this over sRGB? Well, it's a larger color gamut. Why not Pro Photo is the other question that I'm most likely going to get. 
Well, Pro Photo is a larger color gamut, but it really doesn't support anything. I'm gonna get all the information that my camera can actually capture in the Adobe RGB profile. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it. Now the key thing here is to make sure that you're in 16 bits. You don't wanna be in eight bits. You wanna be in 16 bits. That's a big, big difference as far as image quality goes. So this stuff down here, don't worry about it. Doesn't make a difference at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and okay. Now what we're gonna do here might be surprising to a lot of people. I am not gonna make a lot of adjustments inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Now normally I would. However, I'm not. I'm just gonna do some minor alterations to the image. In astrophotography, I can do a lot of adjustments or selective adjustments a lot more effectively inside of Photoshop than I can ever in this program here. And so what we're gonna do is just make some small adjustments. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just boost my overall exposure up just a little bit. Now up here we have the ability to pick different color profiles. I've got Adobe, Landscape, Portrait, Vivid. You would think that would give me a little more color. I am gonna put some color in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually use Landscape. And, and the reason for that, and you can see this image shift, it has a little less contrast in the image. When you're toning your initial image, you don't want it to be contrasty, meaning you don't want it to get really dark in the darks like that because as you bring these out, they're gonna to start to fall apart. You wanna have more tonal range there than less. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit Command Z and undo that. That would be Control Z on a PC. Now I'm also going to lower my contrast just a little bit. Just like I said before, I want to lower that contrast. As I make a selective adjustments, it's going to bring out those areas a whole lot better. I can add that contrast back in at the end. I don't need to do it right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I can come here to my highlights. I'm just gonna open up my highlights just a little bit. Actually gonna bring my exposure down and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna bring up those highlights a bit. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now I do have a color cast here and I can remove that later. I'm not gonna do any color adjustments at all right now. And this is actually all I'm gonna do here except for noise reduction, and we're also gonna do a little vignetting here. Sometimes when you shoot with wide angle lenses, they do vignette in astrophotography a little bit on the edges. However, this is not as much edit as actually the color of the sky. So we're gonna do a little bit of work there, but not a lot. Now, what you want is under optics right here in the new one, and under optics, we're gonna see vignette. And we wanna make sure that this is open so that there's the secondary option of midpoint. And what we're gonna do is just slide this to the right and that's gonna brighten. If I slide it to the left, it's gonna make it darker, but we're just gonna open up those areas. I wanna change the midpoint. So what this is doing is expanding it this way or this way, so we're getting more or less. So you can see as I'm moving this, and let me make a large adjustment so you can see it better. So as I change this, it's moving it out towards the edge and in towards the center more. Right here's where it was and I just wanna do a little bit and then we're gonna bring this way back. And that looks pretty good. So we're just making a slight minor adjustment there. Nothing drastic, but we're gonna open that area up a little bit. Now you could do this with the brush and paint it in with flow and it would be more effective, but you would have to paint it into every single one of these images and that would be too difficult. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and open these images into Photoshop. So I'm just gonna hit open then. All right, now everything is open. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Command R to get rid of those rulers. We have everything open as an individual tab, so each image is independent of itself. We wanna stack all of these images together, and there's no reason to do it manually when you can automate it. So what we're gonna do is go up here to File, Scripts, Load Files into a Stack. And then we're gonna hit Add Open Files, because that's all that I have up there. Now normally I would automatically align source images, but what I will tell you this, in astrophotography images like this, Photoshop does a horrible job of stacking images and I don't use it. Um, and we are going to use a smart object, but not now, so we're not gonna select that. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. And this happened really quickly on my computer, it might take a little bit on yours. And you can see all those images have been stacked. Now we don't really need these, but I'm just gonna leave them up. 
Now, what we need to do is turn these off. And this is the slow, horrible part of astrophotography and stacking inside of Photoshop. The first thing that we're gonna do is I actually wanna find a foreground that looks good because we're gonna adjust these. So let's go ahead and find a foreground that I like. This doesn't mean that you have to use this foreground, but we'll just say that one looks okay. So this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit Command J, and then I'm gonna rename this by double clicking it. I'm gonna call it Trees. And I'm gonna drag trees down to the bottom, turn it off. When we stack these images, we're gonna move them around and the trees are gonna become all fuzzy and not look good. So what we're gonna do is just use the trees from this image here at the final product. So now we can turn these back off. And what we're gonna do is select the, you're gonna have the bottom image on, we're gonna select the top image, turn it on, and you're going to go up here to opacity and reduce the opacity to 55, 50%, somewhere around there. Now I use something called a scrubber, so you can see as I go over the number, and then I go over to opacity, my cursor changes to a hand with two arrows. If you hold, if you click and hold, and you drag to the left or right, it changes the numerical value, or you could just come over here and use the slider but you're gonna see me use that scrubber a lot, so that's what I'm doing. I'm clicking on opacity when the hand comes up, holding it down, going to the left or right to change that numerical value. And that works for any numerical input inside of Photoshop. So what we need to do is I'm gonna do a Command Plus and we're gonna zoom way in here and this should look horrible. And I wanna zoom in pretty good to see this to make sure that I'm aligning these up correctly. Now we are having a little bit of rotation. Remember the earth is rotating sort of like this. At some points, these might need to be rotated just here or two to line up perfectly, but we'll see. We might not use all of these images. So let's go ahead and start stacking. And the reason for stacking is to reduce what's called the noise to signal ratio. Basically the noise is going to get removed by averaging and we're gonna keep all the detail because that is gonna stay constant. So what we got up here is our move. And this is gonna allow us to move these images over top of each other. Now this is the hardest part. That looks like they're on top of each other, but I guarantee you they're not. I'm gonna be using the arrow keys a lot to sort of move the image around because it's more of a finite adjustment. And then you're gonna see me turn this on and off. And what I'm looking for is movement. Let's try it one more to the right, see if that looks better. So now I'm seeing a little movement. So I'm gonna go back to the left. And that looks pretty good. Everything seems to be lined up. So then you're gonna come back to opacity and make that 100%. And then you're gonna go up to the next image, turn that on, and reduce the opacity once again. And then we're gonna go ahead and take that move tool, try to line those up and then use the arrow keys to get it more exact. Then you're gonna come over here and turn this on and off. And that looks like they lined up pretty damn good. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the opacity. Now I'm just gonna go through the rest of these. No sense of me showing you exactly how to do this. The process is exactly the same and you're gonna work your way all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna speed this up and I'm gonna work up to the top. Okay, now what I've run into here is we're starting to get that rotation on these two images and they're gonna be difficult to align without going into rotate. Now I could turn this on and come up here and spend some time rotating these images so I can go to image, image rotation, and then I can come in here and do arbitrary. And this is going to allow me to do this clockwise. So what angle do I wanna do this? So let's put 0.5 clockwise. So it's gonna be going this way. So I'm gonna go ahead like that. And it's going to rotate that image just a teeny tiny bit to help line this up. So now I can come in here and see if that's helping. So we're gonna go up one. You can see it's still jumping. We're gonna move it over. And we got just too much movement here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this layer. 
and I'm going to delete this layer because it's going to have more of it. And we're just going to stick with these images. It's going to be able to remove the noise and give us a better image. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to shift click. So I've selected the top image. I'm going to hold shift down and click the last image. We don't want the trees because that's just for the foreground. And now we're going to stack these images. And to stack, you just need to go out here in the gray space and right click. If you're on a Mac, you can hold control and left click. Or in my case, I use a Logitech mouse. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. And it's going to bring up convert to smart object. Now, turning something into a smart object is going to take a little bit. So give it some time. Don't feel like your computer's crashing. It's going to take some time to work. And it's going to have an output of just one image. And it's going to look like it's flattened the images, but it's going to have it's kind of a little symbol designating it as a smart object. All right, so you can see right up here, now we have that little weird symbol and that symbol saying, hey, this is a smart object as you can see. Now, what we wanna do is we want to stack these images and this is what the stacking process will do. And it, all this noise that we see in here is gonna get removed and it's gonna keep this area. However, it is going to blur the outer edges of the stars a little bit, so they're going to seem soft. You have a choice. You can leave the noise in and have everything a little bit sharper, or you can reduce the noise and have everything a little bit smoother. We are going to be able to go back in and sharpen this image and kind of get some nice crisp edges once we've toned this image. So most likely, I'm going to use the stacking process. To do this, we want to go up to Layer down to Smart Objects, over to Stack Mode, and we'll do two different modes. We're gonna do Mean and Median, and see which one we like better. If you wanna know specifically what these are, you can just do a Google search and it will explain it. It's just two different ways in which it analyzes the stack. All right, so we've got a lot of noise removal in this, and maybe too much. Now what I'm gonna do is create something called a snapshot. So over here in your History Palette, and if you don't have any of these palettes up, you just need to go to Window and then down to History and make sure that whatever you want is ticked. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to click Snapshot. And this is going to take a picture of an image at a specific time. So you can see right up here, here's my first snapshot. We're going to call this, I forget whether it was mean or median. So mean. So we're going to call this mean. And we're going to go back down and we're going to go back to convert a smart object. We're going to do the other method. So we're going to go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, and this time we're going to do median. So let's take a look at the two. So I'm going to make a, another snapshot. And just to make this easy so everybody understands what's going on, I'm going to call this median. And we can toggle between the two states. So this is mean, and this is median. This is mean, this is median. So median has definitely a little more detail and sharpness. However, it has removed a lot of that noise. Now it's blurring these underlying stars and keeping these brighter stars a little bit sharper. So we're gonna go ahead and use this stacking method. So next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to convert this back into a rasterized image because we could use this as a smart object, but there might be some adjustments that I want to show you how to do that aren't available. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo this and keep it as a raster image. So once again, we're going to go out here, we're going to right click, and then we're just going to say rasterize this image. That's just turning it into a normal layer. So there we go. The smart object is gone. We have this new image with the noise reduced and I can zoom back out. And now we can start the process. Now you see we have lost some data over here and we can easily crop that stuff out at the end. But our stars are all aligned and we have a much smoother noise-free image. Now I'm not gonna go into every single technique that you can do for stars. I know a lot of people go into the different channels and do some stuff. So in channels you have the red, and you can see that is all the information for red. Now red is gonna have a lot of information, but it's not gonna be the sharpest channel. Green's gonna be your sharpest channel with the best detail in the image, and blue is probably most likely gonna be the messiest and noisy image. And I know a lot of people do go in here and make selections and reduce the star size, so if you look here, you're getting a lot of glow or outer glow, too much glow with the blue channel. 
So I'm just gonna show you an easy way to do this. It's something that's really easily to do. And what we'll do is we're gonna do a little trick here so we can see if this looks better. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J and we're gonna do it on this layer and then we can toggle between the two to see if it really did make a difference. We're gonna go up to this layer and then we're gonna to go to select color range. Now what we wanna choose is highlights. This is gonna help us choose just the highlights. Now we wanna choose the stars, not this galactic core mess in here. So what we're gonna do is start with range and as you adjust your range, you can see it's getting more sensitive when we go to the left and less sensitive as we go to the right. So we wanna go until we start seeing this galactic core appear. And if we don't get it the first time, it's okay. So we're gonna go just to where we see that disappear. And then we're gonna increase the fuzziness. The fuzziness is really just how sensitive it is once again. So as we go like to the right, it's gonna make it more sensitive. We go to the left, it's gonna make it less sensitive. So we're gonna go right to about, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit okay. And that looks good. It looks like it got the stars, but not the galactic core. Now, one thing that you can do is you can go into channels and you can save this selection. So notice we spent all this time, if we need to go back in and make an adjustment, we can save this as something called an alpha channel. So all I'm gonna do is click this mask button and it's gonna create an alpha channel. And if I come down here and turn on this alpha channel, and then I select the alpha channel, we'll deselect this with Command D, you can see it's made a selection here of just the stars. So if I need to go back and make that selection again, I can either hold my Command or Control key and click the alpha channel and it makes a selection of that area. So what we're gonna do is turn off all the channels and just select the blue channel and we want that selection to be live. And all we're gonna do is just barely reduce these stars so they're not glowing over that outer edge. And it's really, really easy to do. You go to filter, other, minimum, and we just wanna use one pixel. And you wanna make sure this is on roundness. If you do more than one pixel, it's gonna just reduce some of the stars so much that you don't see them anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay and it's gonna reduce that, and then we're gonna go back up to RGB, and truthfully, we're done. So let's go over to Layers, and I'm gonna hit Command D, and we're gonna zoom in to an area, and we can see what the difference is. Let's just go right here. So we've got some bright stars and dark stars. So I'm gonna turn this on and off and see if we can see any difference. So this is the before, and this is the after. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So this is, bef this is um, before, after, before, after. It made up before, after, a teeny tiny adjustment. Do I think that 99% of people are gonna see a difference? No, but it's something that you can do if you'd like to do. We're gonna go ahead and delete this layer because we don't need this layer anymore. And we're gonna go ahead and keep that layer with that minimized star adjustment. We're gonna zoom back out. Now, this is the cool part of this tutorial, and I think where it's gonna differentiate between the techniques that I use and what most people are using. A lot of people I've seen actually go into the channels and pick one of these channels to use as their adjustment layer, so we'll check this. And they make this a luminosity adjustment by doing a Command A, Command C, then they go back into here, and over to layers and then they paste that layer into it and this luminosity layer brightens this up so what you would do is you would come in here to luminosity so it's just doing the brightness and you can see this is brightening that area well that works great but that's a stupid way to work so we're going to delete that because you don't have a lot of control over it and what we're going to do is something a little weird now we're going to come in here and use curves i pretty much only use curves you will not see me using levels Levels is way too simplified, and you can do a whole lot more in curves. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just brighten this up a little bit. So what I'm after here is brightening this modeled area in here. But I don't wanna affect the shadows, and I don't wanna affect the bright, bright stars. And I think that's what everybody's trying to achieve here, right? We're trying to open the part up that we wanna see, but not blow out the stars. You'll notice down here I have the info palette and I have it set to RGB and 
I pretty much only use the K value. And to change that, because it's not default, you click on an eyedropper and you go to grayscale. Now what this is doing is giving you the gray value in the image. So right there, that's 74. So if I come over here, I can get that star value, which has no detail in it. It's pure, pure white. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. And I'm gonna show you how to preserve that information. So we've made this adjustment. I don't really care what the adjustment is at this point, because it's not gonna matter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called a luminosity mask, very similar to a luminosity layer, but this is a luminosity mask. And to make one, you're gonna come up here to image and go down to apply image. Now you don't need to change any of this information. All you need to do is click invert. What this does is we can either apply this adjustment to the shadow areas of the highlights. In this case, we want to apply it to the highlights so we don't want invert selected. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now what you're going to see is this has turned into a mask and not just a plain black and white mask, a luminosity mask. So if I hold the Alt Option, I click on the mask, you can see this is actual the mask. It looks like that green channel, but it's not, it's a mask. And anywhere it's perf dark, it's not gonna apply the adjustment to it. And anywhere that it's bright, it is going to apply the adjustment to it. And you can change this mask by doing a simple curves or levels adjustment. So I can come in here and, and make this more dramatic and I can brighten up these areas to apply it more there, but I'm not gonna do that to the highlights, but we'll, we'll leave that on the shadow areas a little bit. We don't wanna make it too strong because this is a nice soft tonal curve. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now when I come in here and I look at this adjustment, I turn this on and off, you can see it's pretty much only affecting the mid-tones and the highlight areas. However, it's not really affecting the shadow areas as much. And remember, you can control this. I can paint pure black or do whatever I want. So now I can go into this curve and brighten these areas up a whole lot more and I can make it so it is only affecting certain areas of the image and not others. Now the luminosity mask is good, but we told it to only affect the highlight areas. One of the things I don't want it to do is brighten up the stars anymore because we don't want to blow them out. So we're going to do a second option. So we're going to come out here in this gray space and I'm going to double click and this is a left click and that's gonna bring up layer style. And what we're looking for is the blend if layer and this layer, meaning this layer right here. Now what you can do here is say, hey, I want you to hold back from certain areas of the image. Here, remember we held back from the shadow area, so we wanna hold up from the highlights. So I can take this and slide this over, and what this is gonna do, it's not gonna affect these whites, it's just gonna affect the area between here and here. And so I could do the same thing with the blacks. I can narrow it down so it's affecting less up in here. Now you can hold the Alt Option key and split these. And by splitting these, it makes the process a little smoother so you don't get any jaggedy edges. And you won't see it as much in an image like this, but in a traditional image, you will see it. So we'll just go ahead and split these up a little bit. And what we're doing here is we're telling it, you can see as I dial this out, it's disappearing from this area. And as I slide it back, we're getting it back into those areas. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, I don't want it in the bright, bright, bright star areas, but I do want it to affect this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we're gonna turn this on and off and you can see the huge difference that made, but we're holding back adjustments from specific areas. This is the way you should be toning an astrophotography image. Now you can isolate that to do whatever you wanted. If you wanted to affect the shadow areas, you would just be doing the opposite. Now I don't really want to affect the shadow areas, but I'm going to show you how to do it quickly. So I'm going to make that a curve. I'm going to bring up my shadows and I'm going to hold down my highlights. So we have an area where we're just affecting the shadow areas. And then we're going to go up to image, to apply image, and to affect the shadows, we want invert, and we're gonna hit okay. So in this one, we can see this, it's not affecting highlights, however, it's affecting the shadows, because the way a mask works is, anywhere you see white, 
it is applying the effect and anywhere you see black, it is not applying the effect. Now we don't want to do this. So we're eventually just going to come up here and delete this layer. And then we can go in here and start painting and applying this idea to specific areas in the image. So what I'm going to do is just brighten up this area of the image. We want a little more contrast in the dark areas and we want more brightness in the other areas. So we're going to bring out that galactic core. What we're going to do is I'm not actually going to make a selection. I'm just looking at this area when I do it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make another adjustment where I'm bringing up this area a whole lot. And then we're going to hold it back from the shadow areas. We don't want it to happen there. All right. So this is what this looks like. That's good. That's good. But we don't want it to happen everywhere. So what are we going to do once again? Yes, we are going to we're going to make a luminosity mask. We're going to go up to image. Down to apply image. We don't want invert selected and we're going to hit OK. Now, right now it's making that mask, but it is applying it everywhere a little bit. We only want it in a specific area. All right. If we look at this mask, you can see it's still not not perfectly black over here. We want this area perfectly black. So what we're going to do is alt click that back. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush and I want to use black and I want a really low flow and I'm going to show you why a low flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer on top of this layer. So you understand what I'm doing and we're going to fill this with white. So I'm going to shift delete as a fill command, go to white and show you what flow does in Photoshop. If you've never used it. Now let's move this all the way up. Now, normally if you take the color black and you paint, it makes a perfect 100% color black. If you lower the opacity of this down to 40% and you keep going over it, it's just going to be 40% unless you let go and do it over again. Flow works totally differently. So we're going to lower the flow a lot. And each time I go over flow, it's going to build up, build up, build up until it gets totally black. This is going to allow us to blend and have smoother transitions between areas. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off and I'll just delete this so it's not confusing to people. We're going to use that idea to remove this from certain areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint actually into that luminosity mask using flow. I'm going to go ahead and make my brush soft and big and just kind of go over the areas where I don't want that to be applied, which is out here. Make this a super brush because we don't want it here and we don't want it here. We're just going to come in here and just keep painting. Because remember, we just want it in this area. So we don't want any of that to spill over. I'm going to come in and paint it out. Now, if we come back up to luminosity mask and I alt click it, you can see we're starting to get darker, right? So I can go ahead now and I can increase this and I can make the black here. And we don't want it there at all. So we're really isolating that. We'll click back out. Now we'll turn this on and off. Now remember, once again, we don't want that to apply to the stars. So we need to go and we need to double click out here and we need to apply the if then slider. And what we're going to do is just slide this over because we don't want it there. We're going to hold the alt option. We're going to split this. And we can see when it starts affecting that area and when it doesn't. So right about there seems good. And we're going to slide this because we don't want to affect the stars. And then we can slide this so we have a nice split. And now it's going to be affecting just this one area, but not the stars. So we're holding it back from there and we don't really care because we've hit out this area. And what we're going to do is hit OK, and then we're going to turn this on and off. And you can see we've got a whole lot more contrast in top in that area. Now, you can use the info palette to read specific areas. So we'll just come in here and you can come in here and read. You can see those are my values of that. You don't want to get anything like this star right here where we don't want to make it too bright where it starts to read zero. So zero means there's it's pure white. There's no detail. 
So what you would do is just go through your image until you've toned this exactly how you wanted it. So if I wanted to bring up the highlights a little bit more here, I could come in here and make any of the curves adjustment. And so we're gonna bring up our highlights, not our midtones. So we're bringing the midtones and shadows back down. We're just increasing that contrast there. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit Command I and make that black. And by making it black, I can make my brush a little bit smaller and I can just paint the color white. And I'm gonna paint the color white at 100%. And that's just gonna bring up those areas just a little bit. So you can see as I turn this on and off, we're just bringing that area up a little bit. Now, just like before, I can come in here and I can double click this and we're gonna do both the shadows and the highlights. Remember, I don't wanna affect the stars or the deep dark blacks. So I'm gonna split this. Move this here, cause I don't wanna affect those areas. And then I'm gonna split this one and move this here and move this here. And now you can see we're bringing that area out, but we're not affecting everything in that image. Now right here got a little bit too bright. I can go in here and paint black or I can lower the opacity of this layer a little bit and just blend it in a little bit more. And just like that, we're bringing out this Milky Way and doing some amazing stuff to it. Now, if you want to add some color to this image, it's really easy. You're just going to come in here and make an adjustment layer. We're going to boost the color or shift the color, anything that you would want to do. I'm just going to show you how to do an overall color boost. Now, most of the color here is going to be the yellow and the red that we want to increase. So what we're going to do is go to red and we're going to increase that color. And then we're going to go to yellow and then we're going to increase that color. If you wanted to shift the color of yellow, you would just come in here and you can see you can shift the color of yellow. And we're going to do that in a second down there on the bottom. Okay, and once again, we're going to hit command I to make this white black because black is hiding that adjustment now everywhere. And if we take white and we just go ahead and we paint it into a specific area of this image, now it's just making this area more colorful and it's not affecting the rest of the image. Now right here we have a little bit of light and this is just some of the ambient light that's over here by these trees. And it's very yellow and it's a little bit distracting from this image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna make another hue saturation adjustment layer. And then we're gonna come over here cause that color is yellow and we're gonna shift that color to make it a little more red. So that that color starts to look like this color. We're going to desaturate that so it's not as strong. And you can change the lightness here so we can get it so it's right about there. Now look, it's affected the whole image. We don't want it to affect the whole image. So Command I. And then we're gonna come in here and paint. But once again, we wanna use lower flow so we can blend up. So we can just come in here. Now the cool thing about doing this is if you mess it up and you go too far, it's okay. So we can fix that. Just like you can paint white, you can paint black. So you could paint it back out of a specific area and we can just blend that in to any spot. But we wanna hit blah. You want to hit make sure that we're on white and we are and we're just going to go ahead here and get this area out to make sure it's totally gone. Pretty good there. And I'm going to hit X. So the letter X changes your foreground background. You can come over here and click it, but I usually just hit X and then I can come in here and make sure I haven't affected any of these areas right here. And that looks pretty good. So the last thing that I'm going to do, and this is difficult to tell, I don't like to find a dark or a neutral spot in the sky and make it gray and shift it. Because truthfully, there's a lot of light spill over and it would be difficult to find a true neutral gray in an astrophotography image like this. So what we're gonna do is just remove some of the blue and cyans that are in the darker areas of the image that we actually don't want. We wanna keep them in the highlights, but we wanna remove some of that spillover in those areas. So once again, we're gonna come on here, make a hue saturation adjustment. And remember, we wanna remove the cyans. We're gonna remove the cyans. I'm just, I wanna reduce that saturation a little bit. You can see it's reduced it everywhere. 
just like we did before, we don't want to apply that to the stars. So we're going to remove that from the highlights. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to image, apply image. We want to tick this because we want that to be applied to the shadow areas and we're going to hit OK. So now we've made a luminosity mask and it is not doing this adjustment star areas of the image, but I'm going to increase that just a little bit because it is doing some so we can come over here just to make sure we can get our if then blender. We can come out here and I can move this up way up so we're not affecting any of those areas and hit OK. And now by doing this, you can see we've really sucked some of the blue out of the darker areas of the sky, which is definitely making it look a whole lot better. So I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to crop this. We're going to go to two by three because this is the original format. And we're just going to come in here and crop this a little bit. We'll just go for go with this for right now. I'm not too worried about the crop. I'm just trying to show you what it looks like. And that is basically it. And this is the process that you would be using to bring out an astrophotography image using luminosity mask inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, after you've got your image exactly where you wanted it, and if you wanted to select out the trees and replace these trees, you could. Um, one thing that you want to do is you're eventually going to be able to sharpen your image, but you want to make sure that you size your image before you sharpen it. What we'll do is just, I'm going to leave this image the full size. So you need to make sure that you select your image layer, your top image layer, and that's what you're going to sharpen. Now, if you're going to reduce this out for the web, you need to reduce it first, then sharpen it. It makes a huge difference. Don't sharpen an unsized image or don't sharpen and then size it. Doesn't work like that. So then you would just come up here and you could use any method that you want for sharpening. There's a whole bunch more than what we see here. And we could just go to Smart Sharpen. And in this case, about 124% is good. Now, one thing that you want to do when you sharpen is you want to bring your image up to 100%. You can tell when it's at 100% by looking right here. So one more click and bam, we are at 100% right there. And that's what you want to look at when you sharpen. So we will come up here now and we can go to sharpen and smart sharpen. And this is going to give us a view of what it looks like. And as we make it a ton, it's going to over sharpen it now and it will get way too sharp. And if we lower it too low, it's not going to be doing anything. So you just want to get it to that happy medium. We're going to do about 124 on this image and bam, just like that, we've got a nice sharp image. And then I will back out. And that is basically it. Now, if you do want to save this to the web, make sure that you convert this image to sRGB. If you don't know how to do it, it's easy. You go to edit, convert to profile, and you want to select this to sRGB and hit OK. Now, when you post images on the web, they need to be in the sRG color format. You don't want to save your images that you're going to print or you use as sRGB, just something that you were going to size and use on the web. That is basically the process. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.